Today I came in, it's a Monday, and I came in to work and have gotten a little bit sidelined by organizing my drawers. So I've got everything according to color and size and extras. The top drawer tends to be all the colors I use right away. The second drawer is for, let's just move you, for all the extra paint. Sometimes I buy all sorts of extra tubes and don't even realize that I have the color at home. So this was a good thing to do. But then I found all of the debris and I've been cleaning and throwing and pitching. I might be avoiding work, but um, I'm feeling really good about knowing what I've got and where it is. And these Ikea cabinets are amazing. So here's what the studio looks like this morning. Just getting some prep work done, relaying the tarps to go under the carpet. Yeah. It's the beginning of a new week. And my Magello Stay Wet canvas, which I've talked about before, reusing a paper that I washed. It's got a wet sponge underneath. The wet paper is a very special paper and then it has a top that clicks in. This little handy tool allows me to um, get all of the paint. See what it does to the to the paint tube. It allows me to get all of the paint out of my tubes because they are fairly expensive. So I, in my organizing, I've got all of the, again, this is like a third used or um, got a third left and there's like just little bits left in all of these. So I have dedicated this drawer to that and I will on purpose, Julia, yes you will, on purpose, use these up before I open another container. And then these are my tubs. The tubs are great. Um, I use popsicle sticks over and over and over to dig out the paint from them. Um, they're handy, but I make a mess and I really don't like that paint all over myself when I'm getting a palette ready. Uh, you may know this is my least favorite task. So that could be why I have started cleaning to avoid it, but I'm getting to work now, I promise. So you put this, you put the tube right in the tool and you're rolling up and it just squeezes everything to the top and out. I do find the last little bit to get out, but I don't need that much. So I'll do it last time. That last little bit to come out is, you know, sometimes you have to really give it a push. But that's this tool. And this is called a Gill, this is from McGill Mechanical Company. There you go. Tip for the day. Well, there you have it. Color mixing by accident. Oh no. So I'm all set up to finish this 24 by 72. And I had my palette already and you've seen, you know, some of the tips and how to get the paint out. And then I got to work and I realized, well, where's my green? Where's my green gold? This is my favorite, absolutely favorite green. Green Gold by Golden, and it was not on my on my palette. I had to stop everything. I had to hunt it down. I'm so thankful that I found it. I had just put it somewhere where it shouldn't be, but I have it now. Now I can get to work.
get some of it out. I use a lot of it. So you'll see a big gob. And did you see what happened to that white paint? Totally got uh, into my into my yellow. Recently, I got in the mail a kit from a company called Artify. This is like so exciting. It's my first time as an influencer trying out a new product. So their brushes came, they're synthetic brushes, and they came in this whole little pack. So I thought I'd actually try some on this painting and I'll let you know if I like them. Now, I use fairly like wide brushes and there's not too many in here. This is more, I think, for watercolor and it is for acrylic as well, but I it's a probably for smaller painting painters than me. But I'm going to try this and I'm actually, it's perfect. I'm going to Wales in a couple of weeks and I'm going to bring this because I'm bringing a watercolor sketchbook and I'm going to be doing some little drawings and I think it's gonna be fun. And I think this is gonna be perfect. So the big thing that they said is that these things don't have a clue what they're called. My daughter knows what they're called, but these things don't come loose. Apparently they have solved that problem. So start with a C, do you guys know? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try these brushes with this. They also sent me, and I have not opened it, I have not opened it for this project because um, I'm gonna try it, these all on their own little project. They sent me a whole box of paint. So I'm going to try these and I'll let you know on another project how these go. I remembered that I had footage of me finishing up the initial color blocking of this piece. There was my reference. And you'll see on the canvas, you'll see all the red. That's how I started my painting. And now what I'm doing is I'm color blocking. And in this sped up video, you're gonna see me laying down paint, putting in the mist. I hope you enjoy it. And then I will be adding in the footage that I took today of my final um, work on this 24 by 72 inch painting. I'll try to describe for you a little bit about what I've done here. I paint the canvas red to begin with. I chalk in my image and then I use a burgundy red paint to ink in my, vid my uh, image just so that the chalk doesn't uh, you know, get erased while I'm painting. I started the painting in, I would say in the mid ground. So I started this painting with painting the island and color blocking. And then I used big strokes to fill in the rest of the painting. And if you notice in the reflection, a lot of those strokes are vertical. I don't tend to paint water horizontal, especially when it is um, a reflection. I paint a lot of vertical strokes. I paint a lot of diagonal strokes. And eventually you'll see at the end, I do put in some horizontal strokes that gives the indication that it is water. So I'm uh, checking my reference and looking at, you know, where the light source is and I'm building, building, building.
And there you have it. See you in the next video.